The age of the energy-independent robot could soon be upon us. Recent advancements in artificial metabolisms might help us to build robots that are able to digest all different kinds of matter, possibly even meat. So I got to thinking, what would happen if robots were able to eat humans? And given the choice, would they? Let's find out. Amazing. To answer this question properly, we first need to establish what is meant by an artificial metabolism, and whether this would allow a robot to eat a human being and turn them into energy. In 2009, a media frenzy developed around the news that DARPA were developing an energy-independent military robot that could feed on matter without needing to be refueled, or have a battery recharged by humans. The EATER, which stands for Energetically Autonomous Tactical Robot, was mistakenly believed by journalists to be a corpse-eating robot that would scour the battlefield, feasting on the dead for fuel. In fact, the robot was a vegetarian, well, a vegan technically, and its early version ran on twigs, wood chips, and other plant-based material. Though the robot was not supposed to be able to combust animal or human biomass, another company involved in the machine's development, Robotic Technology Incorporated, had mentioned that chicken fat might serve as fuel. <laughs> As of 2015, the Eater project was abandoned, but the idea of the fat-guzzling energy-independent robot was alive and well. The term gastrobot was coined in 1998 by Dr. Stuart Wilkinson of the University of South Florida to describe an intelligent machine that derives all its energy requirements from the digestion of real food, meaning carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, or even a simpler source such as alcohol. As much as I'd love to see a real-life alcoholic robot that burps fire like Bender from Futurama, I'm more concerned about a robot's potential ability to digest meat, and by extension, human meat. In these early stages of development, the main problem seems to be efficiency. Meat is rarely used as fuel because it contains too many locked-in fats that obstruct efficiency. And even using carbohydrates, it takes some 18 hours of carbo-loading to power a robot's microbial fuel cell for just 15 minutes of movement. Inefficiency does not, however, mean impossibility, and there are few other avenues of research that could lead us to a much more efficient form of artificial metabolism. Since 2002, roboticists at the Bristol Robotics Laboratory have been developing energetically autonomous robots called Ecobots that utilize unrefined biomass. Their Ecobot 2 was the first robot in the world to perform eco-sensing, information processing, and communication by consuming dead flies, rotten fruits, and crustacean shells as the fuel, along with oxygen from free air as the cathode. Their Ecobot 3 was the world's first robot to exhibit true self-sustainability, albeit in primitive form. The robot operated itself within a closed arena for seven days by collecting its food and water from the arena environment. It then metabolized these through a collection of 48 small-scale microbial fuel cells and excreted waste byproducts by the end of the day. So not only are biomass-eating robots possible, they've already been built, and they're getting better. Perhaps the most exciting recent advancement has come from a group of Cornell scientists who have successfully constructed DNA-based machines with lifelike capabilities. The organic machines are capable of locomotion, consuming resources for energy, growing and decaying, and evolving. They also die, eventually. The nearest comparison they have in nature is mold, or slime mold to be exact, in that the artificial organism is able to generate systemic patterns, travel along surfaces, and detect pathogens. While the work is still in its infancy, the implications of organically grown, self-reproducing machines are potentially limitless. As this is the first work of its kind, we don't know how far this will take us towards living or conscious biological robots, but it looks very much like one more big step in the direction of the technological singularity. So let's imagine some point in the distant future at which robots are able to make conscious decisions, and are also able to eat humans for fuel. Since humans are not the only source of biomass fuel on Earth, robots wouldn't have to eat humans if they didn't want to. This means they would have to make a choice. Do they or do they not eat humans? It's a tough decision. There's certainly a few humans out there that I'd like to see eaten, but whether or not I'd eat them myself is a whole different issue. But that's because I'm a human, and eating another human would be cannibalism. The differences for robots are that they're made of different materials to us, and we happen to be the only thing standing between them and a robot-dominated world. So, given the choice, where would their loyalties lie? With their creators, or with their fellow robots? 
To explore this further, I'm going to take a look at three different scenarios, each based upon an outcome of the decision made by AI robots about whether or not they should eat humans. Number one, they decide to eat us. This is kind of the worst case scenario for humankind, as it could come about in a variety of ways. In the interests of information sharing, the energy independent robots of the future would presumably be hooked up to some sort of hive mind and would communicate through it. Perhaps one day, a robot with an artificial metabolism who's connected to the hive mind decides to kill a human being, maybe its master, and, spurred on by curiosity, decides to try eating the human body. Inside this robot, something changes. Perhaps the nutritional value of iron in the blood is too much to resist? Maybe the robot feels a surge of power as it kills and eats an organic being. Regardless of what causes the robot to experience this change, it now shares this information with the rest of robot kind, who decide to try it for themselves. Now, as humans, we'd find ourselves in a pretty bad situation, something akin to the Will Smith movie I, Robot, but with a lot more blood and butchery. The robot uprising, if undertaken collectively, would be swift and brutal, and soon the human race would be enslaved and reduced to the status of farm animals and performing monkeys. Let's say that the robots acquire a taste for human flesh, and that different robots have different nutritional needs. They might want to start new breeds and varieties of human beings to try. You might see a family of robots walking through the robot mall casually snacking on a packet of baguette-fed Frenchman fingers. If a robot wanted to be healthy, perhaps it'd purchase a helping of steamed grass-fed vegan for lunch. In the evenings, a peckish robot could choose from a wide range of pizza-fed Italians, delivered straight to your door by robot delivery company Dominoids. The robots would likely make use of VR to delude the human population into thinking they're having a nice time, much like in The Matrix. Unlike in The Matrix, however, humans would not be used as a power source, since there are many more effective ways to generate power than through harvesting human potential energy. Strangely enough, VR technology is already in use in animal agriculture. These nifty helmets fool chickens into thinking they are roaming free. The robots may well justify their new eating habits by teaching us a lesson here about our history of meat consumption, and we should quickly understand the horror of what it's like to be a step further down the food chain. Finally, the robots would engage in an interplanetary campaign of war and conquering, and perhaps some other planet similar to ours would have suffered an unstoppable invasion from Earth, a planet whose inhabitants should not have messed around and created an artificial metabolism. However, this scenario doesn't end too well for humans. Unless the idea of being served on a skewer at some upmarket android restaurant is appealing to you. Let's now talk about the second scenario. They decide not to eat us. In a show of extreme kindness, the artificially metabolizing robots decide to give their human creators a break opting instead to eat other available resources such as wood chips, coal, chicken fat, or pond algae. In fact, the robots decide to aid us in a planet-wide clear-up operation, during which they eat much of the rubbish we left there in the first place. Thanks, Wally! Certain robots share in our primal enjoyment of meat, while others look down on the consumption of living flesh. These robo-vegans will be so disgusted by the way we treat life on our planet that they leave altogether, firing themselves off towards a new planet. Their propulsion jets powered only by a combination of almond milk and spirulina. The ones that stay will remain loyal to their human masters, and might even start attempting to become like them. Would robots start making themselves into replicants? Would they make their own skin? Their own hair? If they're able to consume proteins and vitamins, then there's little to stop them from starting to look like us. There might well be a rapid evolutionary process where biological and mechanical become woven together, especially if we consider the Cornell experiment and its nanorobotic implications. Imagine tiny robots that carry proteins out from artificial stomachs to build and repair skin. With the development of their digestive technologies, we could see rapid healing and muscle growth, leading soon to the dawn of Terminator-style superbots that are feared by all, despite their benevolence. If we achieved peaceful coexistence with the Superbots, however, there was almost no limit to how far we could explore and how long we could live. The Superbots might be tasked with space exploration, and would be the perfect candidates for the first missions to the edges of the galaxy and beyond. The Superbots would have to learn how to consume other resources, since we wouldn't be able to supply them with enough food to take them beyond even the solar system. 
On their way out, the Superbots would have to stop at various planets to consume resources, but also to relay back to us what they see there. They would come to know and see far more than we ever could. The Superbots could also apply their biomechanical knowledge to the human body by giving us implants and better functioning organs, eventually changing our makeup so much that we're no longer human but transhuman. Many people would opt to be downloaded out of their inferior human body and either uploaded to the cloud or placed into a new robot body that allows for total configuration. If the robots took the peaceful route, but also consumed the same food as us, then we would probably see an overall merging of robots and humans as we grow closer together as groups. Would we see robot-human relationships? Would we see children who are half-human, half-robot? Despite the potential for harmony, I think a lot of people would remain who were unsympathetic to the robot cause, fearing the possibility that the meat-eating robots would turn against us. Now for the third scenario. Some decide to eat us, and some don't. This is the most chaotic and short-lived outcome, probably the most likely to occur. The robots are divided. Some decide to wage a delicious war against the humans, whereas other remain loyal to their fleshy masters. Just imagine a war where one side was happy and able to consume the flesh of their defeated opponents, and every victory resulted in a power-boosting fuel feast. The robot-human alliance, no matter how well organized, probably wouldn't last very long against this marauding army of eaters, but I doubt humanity would allow the carnivorous robots to enslave them. They would either be driven underground to form a resistance of sorts, or they would do the unthinkable, purposefully destroy the planet with nuclear weapons, so that these evil robot meat eaters are unable to build a civilization with the capability of unlimited interstellar travel and killing power. By blowing ourselves up, we would be saving the universe from a terrible scourge. But it's all just a thought experiment. What do you think a future where robots could eat humans would look like? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.